Hello and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to show you this charcoal drawing of a white horse, one of my favorite animals to draw. I'm going to be using Kohino charcoal pencils and Kohino silky black pencils. I'm also going to use some charcoal sticks, compressed and vine charcoal, and some erasers and brushes. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more during the drawing process. Now let's have a look. First I'm going to do the sketch and I'll also show you the reference photo. I'll also put it in the description if you want to check it out. So I made some changes to it because I wanted a simpler, darker background and to increase the contrast and to make the main subject stand out a bit more. I also modified the shape of the animal a bit because uh, I wanted the horse to look more robust. I will also have to simplify some details like the mane and some other things which can be a little bit difficult to pull in charcoal. Anyway, for sketching I'm using one of these uh, silky black pencils which probably have charcoal in them but it's a slightly different composition because they're a bit uh, harder and uh, a bit easier. It's a bit easier for them to pull thinner, cleaner lines than it is with regular charcoal pencil. Open charcoal pencils. Now once I finish the sketch I'm going to have to do the background and I'm going to cover the background uh, with a charcoal stick. I'm going to use a piece of compressed charcoal and I'm just going to drag that over this large area of the background and of course I'm going to try to go around the outline of the animal carefully because there are some portions of the animal's body that uh, need to remain very light or almost completely white. So I need to go around the edge carefully. And uh, after that, I'm going to do some blending. I'm going to blend with my finger, adding a bit of charcoal here and there as necessary. But your finger is a great blending tool because it allows you to blend and cover large areas very quickly. It allows you to push that charcoal in so that you can retain that uh, dark value. You, ha you have to be careful around the edges. So sometimes it's easier to rotate the drawing a little bit so that you can work from different angles and so that you can push the charcoal all the way to the edge and avoid uh, having to use erasers too much because you can see this way when I'm rotating I, I can actually achieve a great deal of precision and uh, create a fairly clean edge around some parts of my main subject. Of course there will always need to be a certain amount of cleaning up because you want that clean edge between the main subject and the background so that it would really stand out against the background and for that I'm using erasers I have uh, pencil eraser and uh, kneaded eraser, so whichever is more convenient. I can also use some brushes as well as my charcoal pencil to clean up those edges and to make sure that I uh, explain to the viewer where my main subject ends and where the background begins. Of course because the horse is uh, white and the background is very dark there's going to be a lot of contrast between the two which is a good thing because it will allow the animal to stand out and uh, that is also one of the reasons why I wanted to simplify the background because I thought that uh, the background in the original reference photo was a little bit too distracting now here I'm starting to work on the part of the mane which falls on the forehead area and uh, this is a little bit complicated because some parts of those bangs are going over the eyes and I'm going to have to kind of work in between them because if I put down that uh, darker value which I'm going to need for the, for the eye because it's pretty dark uh, it's going to be very difficult for me to erase some of those uh, lighter whiter lines of course it's not going to be completely white I'm going to be adding a little bit of value to it as you can see but I'm going to need to pull some lighter lines with an eraser a bit later. After I kind of laid that down I started to work on the ear and not just on the ear because I first want to put in some of the darkest details on the horse's head and those are 
this inner part of the ear, uh, the eye, and the nostrils, uh, some parts of the muzzle and the mouth, as well as uh, some um, wrinkles and uh, folds in between the muscles on the uh, uh, on the horse's face. So I did the eye here. As you can see, it's pretty dark, and there's going to be some white eyelashes here, kind of uh, going over that part of the eye. That's going to be a little bit difficult to define, so I'm going to have to work with erasers, and I tried not to use too much pressure in that area, even though I have to use uh, soft charcoal to make that very dark, because it's one of the darkest bits on my drawing. It's the same thing with the, uh, with the muzzle area, it's also very dark. But here I tried to do something slightly different with the background, because I wanted the background at the bottom to be a bit lighter than the muzzle itself. So I'm always trying to create contrast between the main subject and the background. Sometimes some parts of the subject are lighter than the background, sometimes they're darker than the background. So the muzzle here is very dark because it's uh, darker skin and it's also in the shadow. So I try to uh, lighten up the background a little bit here by dabbing it with my kneaded eraser and also by uh, blending it with a clean brush because sometimes when you just pull a clean brush over a part of a charcoal background you can lift up a little bit of that charcoal and make it a bit lighter creating a very smooth uh, transition a very smooth gradient we also have some uh, darker areas here where we have this uh, transition between the cheek area into the jaw area so there are some massive uh, jaw muscles there and also some veins and some other wrinkles on the horse's face. Now in this stage I used a piece of vine charcoal to shade some of the larger areas of the horse's face. Vine charcoal is different than the compressed charcoal stick I used for the background because this is lighter, it's softer, it's more easily moved around and that's one of the reasons why I like to use it for shading large areas like this because it's easy to manipulate. I can easily add or take away a value uh, but it's one of the things that I often use when I need to establish some larger relationships like larger contrasts if I need to define a shadow area or a lighter area. Uh, this is good for it because you can just uh, spread it onto larger areas and then uh, kind of later take away a bit of value using erasers or add a bit more using your charcoal pencils. So once I defined some of those uh, larger relationships between the shadow areas and lighter areas, I moved on with, uh, with a little bit of work on the texture of the fur, of this short fur on the horse's head. So it's usually a good idea to do a bit of shading first and then move on with the details. As you can see, my approach was a combination of these two approaches because I first drew a little bit of details and then I did a bit of shading and then after that I started working on the texture of the fur. There are a couple of things to remember when drawing animals fur. You have to kind of try to make sure that the length of your strokes and the direction of your strokes man, uh, matches the uh, length and the direction of the animal's fur. And if we look at the reference, we'll see that the horse's fur, the hair on the horse's head is very, very short, apart from the mane, of course. And I need to find a way to imitate the texture of short fur. Sometimes I can pull very short marks, short strokes using my pencil and a very sharp pencil at that and sometimes I can just drag my pencil creating some unpredictable texture. This part of the mane here in the forehead area is going to be a little bit darker because of the shadow coming from the ear. As you can tell the light source is coming from above and it's also more, coming more from the right side. So the left side is the, is the shadow side which is why uh, the, uh, the right side of the ears and the, light, uh, the right side of the cheek area is going to be a lot lighter. Those are going to be some of the lightest parts of the, of the horse. Right now I'm going in and trying to define this mane in the forehead area a little bit more, breaking it up into some larger segments 
and drawing a bit more shadow in between them. I'm also adding a bit more texture as well as shadow around this area, around the eye. And uh, there are some nice looking large veins here on the horse's face. So <clears throat> even though I'm shading around, the, around these veins and wrinkles the way I normally would, I'm, at the same time I'm trying to make their edges just a little bit uh, jagged so that it looks like actual hair. So I'm trying to draw uh, this texture of the short fur all over the horse's head. And here on the ear I'm pulling some lighter strokes as you can see to draw that lighter hair. And now uh, drawing some lighter marks on the top of the head here, which is the part of the head which is going to be catching a bit more light from above. So that part of the mane is going to be lighter, almost completely white. <coughs> and when you're do doing this, it's uh, more convenient to use a pencil eraser. I use a Kohino pencil eraser, which is like a rubber eraser in a wood casing, which can be sharpened. And sometimes I use a kneaded eraser, sometimes I use this pencil eraser. Yeah, I don't have a Tumbo Mono Zero eraser yet, but that is also very useful. <clears throat> so now I'm going to move on to this part of the mane here, on the top of the neck area. And you can see that I already made some indications of shadow areas in the mane. Uh, <clears throat> when I draw the texture of the fur, I like to start with the darker hairs, or the parts where the hair appears darker. Uh, and th these are usually the areas where we have some transitions from uh, one muscle to the other, that, where there are some folds or wrinkles in between the muscles, or between different parts of the body. So wherever the one part of the body is raised or the body is kind of twisting a little bit, there's going to be a little bit of uh, contrast between the areas of lighter value which are protruded and those areas of lighter value which are in the wrinkles and folds, uh, areas of darker value which are in the folds. Um, I'm just uh, adding a bit more texture to this lower part of the muzzle and this transition between the muzzle area and the cheek area, making sure that my strokes get lighter and lighter as I kind of go into this light side of the horse's face. Another thing you can do in, adi in addition to using uh, silky black pencils when you're working with charcoal is also using graphite pencils. Um, graphite can be combined with charcoal as long as you make sure that you put down those darker areas first and then you can put those lighter marks, that lighter texture with a graphite pencil. For example, if you look at this cheek area on the horse, you can see that it's a lot lighter uh, than the shadow area and then some of the shadow areas uh, like for example the muzzle, the eye, etc. So I first put down those darker bits using a charcoal pencil, but for the lighter texture on this cheek area, this uh, large round uh, part of the horse's face, you can also use a charcoal pencil because that's a bit lighter and if you still want to have some texture that'll help. You can use a black colored pencil or you can use silky black pencils which are a little bit harder than regular charcoal pencils. So I like to use a, when, when I work in charcoal I like to use a combination of regular charcoal pencils, these uh, Kohino silky black pencils as well as uh, the usual charcoal sticks. And now I'm going back in with a pencil eraser and trying to pull some lighter marks uh, with an eraser to refine that texture a little bit and make it a bit lighter where needed. So this is a way to make everything appear more three-dimensional because I'm kind of increasing that range of value and trying to stay consistent with the light source, uh, just making some parts of the horse's face a bit lighter and those are of course those parts of the face which are, which are facing towards the light source and uh, which are uh, and those which are facing away from the light source are going to be in the shadow, they are going to be darker, naturally. 
So here as I'm moving on to this neck area I need to tackle this longer mane on the neck and uh, one of the ways I'm going to do this is I'm going to reserve some white space here. So I'm going to work around some of these larger segments of mane because it would be difficult for me to, er uh, to erase or to re remove such large amount of charcoal to, rem to uh, make sure that it this is light enough. So first I'm going to try working around this. Now, uh, obviously this is not going to remain completely white, but it's going to be easier for me to control the amount of value and to pull those highlights if I don't cover them in the first place. So this is a little bit tricky because you have to work around these smaller shapes. But later I can make their uh, shape a little bit more complex by adding some finer, thinner lines with a pencil eraser. But the fact that I left some white space in there is going to make my job a, at least a little bit easier. And this was probably one of the most challenging parts of this drawing, the, this mane, because if you look at the anatomy of the horse's neck, there are some large muscles here, and there's quite a bit of shadow here uh, on this lower part of the neck. So I need to find a way to shade that neck, but at the same time, some parts of that neck are going to be obscured by that mane. So this is a problem. Uh, you have a dilemma. What should you draw first? <clears throat> should you uh, try to uh, reserve the lighter space for the mane or should you just shade the neck area and then try to erase the mane later? Um, that can be a little bit difficult with charcoal but that's the approach I had to take because I thought that it would be easier for me to shade the larger areas first and then work on the details and the texture a bit later. As you can see I'm still refining some of the details especially on the mane and the texture of the fur on this part of the face to the left before I finally move on to the neck. The face is more complex in terms of the amount of details but like I said on the neck area uh, the biggest challenge, of course, was trying to create enough contrast between the mane and the uh, and the neck, and making sure that uh, and making sure that the, uh, the 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 mane looks like long hair, that it looks like actual hair, which can be a little bit tricky. So right now, I'm still drawing some of this shorter fur, short hair. And always going back in and uh, kind of refining it either with brushes or with blending tools. Blending tools are also good to use when you're drawing the texture of the fur because you can't draw every single hair. And what, uh, the, uh, what the brushes do is they allow you to add a bit of density, density and volume to that fur. Uh, and it also softens your marks a little bit so that you don't have to draw every single hair. Now with uh, lighter fur I can't really do that because I have to just uh, stack a bunch of these lighter marks and so far as you can see my pencil eraser is doing a good job. Uh, the problem is only in, in those areas where uh, we have a little bit of darker value uh, and I need to go over some parts of those uh, I need to go over some parts of that mane a few more times just to make sure that it looks like a continuous line uh, so that it doesn't look interrupted in certain places um, adding these lighter strokes with a pencil eraser on top of the darker ones when you're working on the texture of the fur improves the overall appearance of the texture because it doesn't look like a bunch of lines, it looks like a combination of lighter and darker hairs or those that are in the shadow and those that are sticking out and maybe are a little bit lighter. So here, because I can't draw every single hair, again I'm trying to break up this mane into larger segments and then soften everything with a brush. I use, I normally use a couple of different types of brushes. I like to use flat brushes, uh, a, fr a flat bristle brush, or a softer synthetic brush, brush but mostly flat brushes. So uh, normally when you draw lighter hairs like for example grey hair or beard or things like that 
it's a bad idea to try to work around the individual hairs and that also kind of defeats the purpose of using an eraser but sometimes you just have to do it sometimes in addition to using an eraser you have to go in and kind of add a little bit more value in between either individual hairs or groups of hairs because that will add a bit of depth to to that hair or in this case uh, the mane because if I just tried uh, using an eraser over a, sh over a shaded area maybe it would end up looking a little bit too flat and if I started using the uh, uh, charcoal pencil first and made some darker areas and tried to pull those highlights on top of them well maybe those highlights wouldn't be as bright as I wanted them to be so sometimes you have to go you have to work backwards kind of and you have, you have to go back in and add some uh, really dark shadow areas in between the lighter hairs so that, it, that kind of makes everything appear a little bit more three-dimensional. I'm working on this chest area here, but uh, there's not much detail to be discerned here because it's mostly in the shadow because it's uh, down and kind of facing away for, uh, from the light source from the, for the most part. And I also need to add a bit more mane uh, here on this part of the neck. So as you can see, uh, one part of the mane is kind of swept uh, away to the other side of the head. One is on, on this side of the head. And uh, on, the part of the, on the part of the neck which kind of joins the shoulder and the back area, the, the mane gets a little bit shorter. And it's hopefully going to be a little bit easier to draw as well. Every now and then I kind of go back to reassess the amount of value and the texture uh, on the parts of the drawing which I already finished, or in this case the head, and I kind of make some smaller adjustments here and there. Sorry that my head is butting in uh, every now and then, but sometimes I just have to uh, lean over and move in to, uh, to, to see what I'm doing. And uh, now I'm just adding a bit more value on the part of the neck uh, where we have these huge muscles so there's going to be some shadow under them uh, and uh, all I have left to do basically is the mane on the on the right and a little bit of the fur in the uh, lower neck and the shoulder area I'm mostly going to be using a combination of those uh, black, uh, silky black pencils and brushes as well as erasers. Um, if, you, uh, if this video is a little bit too fast for you, if it's a little bit too short, I suggest that you should check out my Patreon because uh, on my Patreon you can find a lot of additional content and you can find longer uh, full-length real-time narrated videos but if you just want to check out the videos here on my YouTube channel, don't forget to subscribe because I have lots of drawings of horses as well as other animals. Now I'm just working on the texture here in the shoulder area. This is a little bit time consuming, that's why most of this is in time lapse because uh, this actual drawing took about three hours so uh, even though it's a it's not a huge size and I probably forgot to mention that the size of the paper is 8 times 11 inches and I also forgot to mention the type of the paper I'm using as well this is a master start sketching paper it has a nice texture that is ni and neither too rough nor too smooth and kind of works works well with both charcoal and graphite especially with graphite I think uh, but for this piece I decided to use charcoal uh, when I was examining the reference photo initially I was thinking about doing the doing it in graphite because I was kind of doing a series of uh, drawings in graphite and then I thought because of all of these uh, larger dark areas and the amount of contrast that I'm trying to achieve it would really be much faster if I actually use charcoal so I switched back to my favorite medium uh, that I've used in so many of my YouTube videos and I decided to do that uh, I decided to do this one in charcoal and I think it turned out okay 
certainly much faster than it would be in graphite, although you could do the same thing in graphite naturally. I'm just putting down some uh, finishing touches on the texture of the fur here and you can notice that some of my strokes here in this area are just a little bit longer because uh, the fur on most animals tends to be the shortest around the muzzle or snout area or the head area and then it gets kind of uh, a bit longer towards the other parts of the body but uh, the horse's fur, the horse's hair is pretty short all over their body except for the mane and the tail of course but I think there is a little bit of variation in in terms of the length of hair because I feel like the hair here is just a little bit longer than than on the nose and the head area well that's just the way it looks to me I'm not sure uh, but these uh, smaller strokes that I'm pulling with uh, with a pencil eraser are really improving the texture of the fur. The drawing is now finished. I'm just going to put my signature over here in the lower left corner and I'm going to draw the signature with a pencil eraser. And after that the drawing is finished. Once again, don't forget to subscribe, give me a like, comment, and check out my other videos. That would be all for this one. Thanks for watching. I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.